Welcome to Module 2, where we'll cover threat management. So if you're looking for the middle management video, you're on the wrong bus. Our bus will actually get you somewhere. Yours will most likely be caught up in several useless bureaucratic lace meetings, so you should stay anyway. We'll kick off our first unit with security practices. This section will help you understand how penetration testing helps minimize the risk of intrusion and gain knowledge about other security practices, including reverse engineering and sandboxing. You will also gain an understanding of the importance of the source authenticity of hardware. The following exam domain objectives are covered. The first portion of exam objective 1.4 was covered in module 1, unit 1. Let's dive in as I explain the purpose of practices used to secure a corporate environment. Penetration testing, also known as pen testing, is the process of experimenting with different ways to penetrate security layers around an information systems network. It's an authorized attempt to break through a company's defense. The idea is if security analysts can find ways to exploit vulnerabilities and gain unauthorized access to data and systems, so can hackers. The organizational security objective is to archive minimum breach defenses and for pen testing to prove that out. Penetration testing is a manual process that involves the use of vulnerability scanners and other appropriate automated tools and culminates in a detailed report of areas at risk of penetration and what the methods of penetration may be. Don't get too excited. But to begin, the analyst proceeds by actually mimicking hackers, replicating attacks from users within the organization and outside it. Before the simulated attacks begin, the analyst needs to draw up a plan detailing objectives and rules of engagement, including timetables, scope, authorization, exploitation, communication, and reporting. This is as close to war games as a real-life job can get. Before performing a pen test, it's important to have a well-defined procedure that outlines how the test will be performed. You can refer to best practice manuals and established security standards. Here's a trusted outline from one of those tech manuals outlining three key penetration testing functions. One, test objects to identify vulnerabilities or assess the efficacy of existing controls. Two, evaluate objects for logical vulnerabilities, such as lack of appropriate security controls or incorrect configuration. Three, obtain information from employees to ascertain whether they understand security practices and take security concerns into account when they operate on the network. Timing is everything. Penetration testing should follow a well-defined timeline which should specify the dates and time of commencement and conclusion. Each person involved in pen testing should know who is doing what and when they will do it. Knowing what should be done and when it should be done are critical because each milestone brings the process to a conclusion with helpful information. Timing, of course, is not set in stone and can change if the situation necessitates. Establishing a schedule will help define the roles and responsibilities of each person. The schedule will also help facilitate proper penetration and will assist decision makers with the appropriate allocation of resources. In some cases, testing may even need to take place after work hours. Scope defines what is going to be tested. It's based on the company's informational security goal. Does the company want to test the security of their entire information systems environment? The company may want to narrow in on a specific area, such as their external networks, specific systems and applications, or the internal environments. Usually, penetration tests are classified according to the following three areas. One, internal environment. Two, external environment. And three, web applications. There are different types of penetration tests within these categories, including the following. Network services test is one of the most common tests. This involves locating specific systems on the network identifying gaps in the operating system and network applications, and attempting a remote attack or an inside attack. A client-side test is performed in order to spot and exploit weaknesses in web browsers, word processing software, multimedia programs, and other client-side software. A web application test tests the security of web-based applications. A wireless test involves searching for all wireless access points in the environment and testing them for vulnerabilities. A proper wireless test includes a search for both authorized and unauthorized access points. A remote dial-up test entails testing all modems in the organization for efficacy of access controls. 
A social engineering test tests employees' alertness by attempting to get employees to divulge passwords and other confidential information. As you can see, clearly defining who is tested, what is tested, and where a test occurs is very important. Choosing to undertake testing in either the real work environment or a simulated one is an essential part of determining scope. A simulated environment costs more to set up and may not yield very accurate results, but tests conducted in the actual operations environment, although typically more accurate, could result in disrupting normal business operations. In many instances, testing in the actual work environment requires access to confidential data. In such situations, a tester cannot proceed without authorization. As a result, the scope of the test may be limited, and a tester may need to conduct a test in a simulated environment. Prior to testing, a tester will need to seek permission from external vendors whose systems and networks may be affected. A couple of external vendors are cloud service companies or internet service providers. Penetration testing must be conducted in accordance with legal stipulations, which vary by country, and industry-specific regulations, if any. Written permissions should be secured prior to penetration testing. All employees and temporary staff who work in the testing process should be included in the authorization. The authorization agreement must include a non-disclosure clause to protect confidentiality of data. Exploitation refers to exploiting weaknesses in the system with the purpose of compromising the network and or stealing stored information. It'll be necessary to define the extent to which a security analyst will attempt to penetrate a system. There are several different levels of testing that could include Perimeter testing. This is where the tester pinpoints weaknesses, but does not try to attack or read confidential information. No holds barred testing. This is where a tester attempts, by any means possible, to infiltrate the system. Attack profile testing, which simulate attacks occurring for different reasons. The profile of attackers will also vary. Remember that both internal and external sources can breach a system or network. Whether you run a comprehensive test or check internal or external threats, a tester will need to know the extent of the network and will need to have some system-specific information before testing can occur. White box or clear box testing is where the tester is allowed access to information about the systems and network and to source code if applications are to be tested. Whereas in black box testing, the tester is not provided with information about the network and security controls or given access to source code in the case of application testing. Finally, in gray box testing, the tester is only given limited information about the network. Since penetration testing can be conducted with or without the knowledge of employees, it's essential to decide which approach to take. If employees know a test is on, some may be guarded about their responses. A test conducted without the knowledge of staff is known as a double-blind test. And when staff are aware, but the tester has no information about the system, it is a blind test. It's important to enable testing teams to communicate through secure channels for the purpose of reporting as well as responding to unforeseen events if the need arises. No penetration test is complete without a comprehensive report. This report is comprised of two critical pieces, an executive summary and a technical section. The executive summary outlines the goals of the test and discoveries uncovered during the test. This summary typically includes an explanation of the purpose of the test, the test procedures used, the risk profile, the issues with accompanying causes, recommendations for remediation, and an actual plan for remediation. This plan should line up with the company's business objectives. The executive summary is intended for management and other decision makers who are in a position to sanction policy and operational changes. The technical section of the report presents a detailed description of scope, procedures, information, attack path, results, and suggestions for remediation. This report is intended for a more technical audience. Something to remember, and please take note, penetration tests are highly confidential and must only be distributed to those already authorized to view a report of this nature.